Good morning. Is anybody up? Hello. Okay, I need my glasses to see. Hi, Bea. How are you? Um, we're talking somatic healing today. Wow, sexy men shirtless. Okay, we're going to talk about some... Oh, I think I see her. We're going to talk about some... Uh, alternative natural healing methods today um, so let me see if I can go get Beth on today is going to be the Beth and Beth show up oh, yep there she is hi Marcus so today is going to be the Beth and Beth show what do you think about that oh there she is <laughs> Beth and Beth show <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to turn off the comments, and I'm going to turn off the requests. So, oh, <laughs> how are you today, Beth? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for um, having me on your IGTV today. Thank you for coming on. It's my um, pleasure. I'm lovely today. I'm actually this. I'm actually in my PJs. Well, you, you know, look. You look amazing. Morning. It's a little. We're having a little Saturday morning talk, and um, and I thought you know these pajamas. They have a little thing that says "Only in Your Dreams" or something like that. Comfy <laughs> and. You know, they're kind of sparkly, which I kind of feel like if you go through somatic healing, I think you probably feel sparkly at the end as you <laughs> know, all the pressures and the burdens that your body has taken on. And so, you know, I have a little method to my madness today. Well, um, some, so some, somatics is all about feeling good in your body and feeling more comfortable in your body. So. I support yeah. your sparkly pajamas. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, everyone, this is Beth, and she uh, runs a Facebook group that's pretty new. What 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 do we say? A couple of months, like the beginning of the year, maybe? Maybe around um, there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Body, mind, and spirit, and it sort of was born out of um, some of the other lipedema. Uh, it's lipedema, body, mind, and spirit. Uh, some of the other lipedema groups because we were finding that maybe those who had similar interests with, you know, keeping their, their um, positivity and um, body acceptance journey and healing, um, it, you know, maybe those people sort of might navigate closer to each other. And so that was how that group was born. And it was pretty funny because I think there were three Beths uh, including, you know, myself and two other, you know, this Beth McGee um, and another gal who were all in a conversation on some other lipedema board. I don't even know what it was. And then it was just funny how things sort of developed from there. So mm -hmm. um, the um, so Beth is um, has she has a journey and she's going to share it with us. <laughs> she is a magic healer. Um, physically in New York and um, she has had surgery and she has had a lifelong uh, career in uh, dance and um, dance training and performance and all of that and at some point in her life her legs took on this lipidemic uh, disease and all of that became insurmountable. And so she had to find other ways. So she's going to tell us all about that. Um, but I would love it because I imagine that there are people listening who have no idea what somatic healing is, somatic mm -hmm. therapy, practice, any of that. So could you give us a little overview of uh, what that is? Sure. I would love to. Um, and thank you so much for that intro. Um, 
So the word somatic means of the body. So somatic, my somatics practice is a therapeutic practice and it includes body work. So it's like I said before, it's all about um, feeling better in our bodies and um, bringing more awareness and flow to our feelings, freeing up um, places where our, we were blocked in our bodies because of um, emotional holding um, and um, just being able to experience more, more freedom and flow and joy and authenticity in our lives. And so isn't that sort of where the whole psychosomatic, you know, absolutely you know mm -hmm. that people are you know, are you really sick or it's really you're in your mind that you feel these things in your body yes um, and that and the psychosomatic nature of my lipedema developing is what brought me to somatics i was already a dance um i have an mfa in dance so i was dance has been my lifelong career and um and I also am a movement analyst. So after I got my MFA, I did another training, a somatic training um, in Laban Martiniev, which is all about how the body moves and what meaning that there is in body movement. And after that, and my lipedema started to progress. And I was in a really difficult um, marriage and, uh, lipedema uh oh are we freezing you Did were freeze? freezing and i think to make oh, sure geez. that it wasn't me so okay um, uh yeah okay so i heard you said you said laban and then that was all i heard okay I so um so after my dance training i took a movement analysis training and that's another that's a somatic modality about movement and the meaning in movement. And it's, um, it's a kind of training that a lot of choreographers take, but it's also, um, it, it, it allows us to analyze movement for a lot of different reasons, for sports, for analyzing, you know, the movements of political candidates and, and I, we can see all sorts of things in the body with this training. And I was teaching dance in a collegiate environment, and I was in a very um, stressful life situation in my marriage, and which I eventually ended. But um, it was in, under those conditions that my lipedema developed. And to me, the the emotional problems and my my um, my emotional overwhelm so obviously was causing my physical symptoms and it was it was immediate so the psychosomatic nature of my illness from the get-go was you know a prominent feature and that's what actually led me to the somatic healing training um and the the training that i did is called core energetics and i completed five years of that training and Along the way, I, I was actually diagnosed with lipedema because I didn't really know what it was until a couple of years ago. But yes, mm -hmm. so um, the psychosomatics, I went around a long way to get there. But yes, it's very, very prominent. And, and it is something that I work with, with myself and my own personal journey and with my clients. Nice. Um, as an aside, I don't know if I... If I ever even said this, but I personally used to dance from kindergarten through 12th grade, not kindergarten, first grade through 12th grade. I did ballet, tap, and jazz. I used to go on toe, loved it. Nice. <laughs> and, um, I wanted to be a Rockette when I probably 10th grade or so. We used to go every year to see the Rockettes at the Christmas show. And I wanted to be a Rockette. And my dance teacher she was really my usual dance teacher, probably for all of those years, actually. Um, and so if you look at pictures of me, you can see like my lipedema showing up from like when I was six. Um, and um, 
she was actually a slightly similar shape. She had oh, wow. a butt shelf. She had a little bit of a butt shelf and she had a little bit of thicker top thighs, you know. Um, so in retrospect, she probably had it as well. Mm. And uh, I wanted to be a Rockette and the Rockettes were starting to, you know, they had a casting call and there was two girls. One was my best friend and another girl who had long, 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 skinny, 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 skinny legs. And um, they, she suggested they go try out and I wanted to try out. And she was like, it'll never happen. There's no reason for you to go because you don't fit, you don't fit the criteria. I'm getting WhatsApped. No, I'm oh, getting WhatsApped. Oh, I see. Nonstop. Oh. Can you shut it off? I don't know how to do that. Let me try to do that. Let me see if I can do that. Is there a way to shut it off? I don't really use WhatsApp, so I don't know. Okay. okay. I had to delete okay. the app. <laughs> okay, that was good. I was like, I'm, I don't usually use this. Um, anyway. Sorry. So I'm sorry about that. That gave me a moment to think because I think actually the lesson in that now is that was ridiculous that she told me not to go. Because, like, I should have. I should have been encouraged to go to a, to have the experience. And even if it was to, to fail, you know, even if it was to fail, mm -hmm. even if it was that, sure, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to fit in, but with what their criteria was, but you know, I mean, nowadays I think you have to go to things like that because you don't know, you don't know if that's the day that they're going to change their mind. You don't know if that's the day that, you know, the universe is going to open up for you. And also you don't know what other, uh, what else could come out of that. You know, like in retrospect, I could have gone and then, you know, some uh, casting agent could have been like, Hey, let, why don't you come in for modeling? Because this is, you know, plus modeling. This isn't, this isn't for you. I want you for something is, else. Yeah. yeah. Like I was um, well, probably I, size 12 then, and I would have fit right into the bottom of the plus, you know, and probably um, at that time, that was what size a plus model really was, you know. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, I think that, I think that, um, you know, what you're saying is really important. And there is something about being a dancer, or having been a dancer, or even an athlete, where we have these standards put on us, that we have a certain standard, right? Sure. And um, that standard, you know, that standard is like, you need to fit in in this certain way. And also, you know, you need to keep trying, you need to, you know, you need to keep trying and trying and trying. And, um, you know, I work with a lot of dancers and they're, you know, they're really hard on their bodies. And then mm -hmm. that, that mentality becomes part of your life going forward, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah. that the, the, the one girl, the, the girl, the tallest girl, she actually got onto the Rockets. Wow. And the, my bestie did not. And my bestie was more, um, yeah, she just, she did not. So in any case, but her daughter ultimately 
my, my bestie's daughter ultimately became a professional dancer and it became so hard on her body that she had to quit because she got all of these other, um, you know, completely unrelated, like not even a knee injury, but all these things in her body completely unrelated to ballet uh, work, but probably very related to that rigorous environment yeah. that she was in and now she's studying to be a doctor so it's like oh my god you know like talk about full circle you know well I, I know a lot of dancers that go into the medical field that become nurses or doctors and that you know that that drive well, is very the very the, 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 yeah. i mean it's the drive is very strong and, and, and dancers are, are really smart people and they do not give up and they, they can take a lot. They're very exactly. enduring people. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm drinking peppermint tea per Dr. Okay. Herbst's recommendation the other night. Oh, what was that? Has, that was recommended for gut issues or for lipedema? I can't remember. I can't, yeah, yeah, I can't remember which aspect, but yeah, all around, it was a good, it's a good thing. I know peppermint is really good for your, for digestion. Yeah, I think, I think maybe it was part of, part of the things that were good for digestive enzymes. So okay. So she believed with the digestive enzymes, the papaya, the pineapple, bromelain. Um, yeah. You're right. I think that this, was part of that that uh, recommendation. She had like a few lines of a list of things. Okay. Is it? Okay. Has you, and and so how was your has your stomach been bothering you? No, I just thought you know what today, uh, why not? You know, okay. I've been using this dandelion root tea for the past two weeks and that's really good it has some things in it that um she also recommends uh burdock root and dandelion and something else uh, if if i remember mm -hmm. right those things are all really cleansing for your liver yes yeah mm -hmm. so um yeah, so anyway, so I thought, you know what, let me do a different thing today. I I drink uh, peppermint tea kind of regularly anyway, so okay. um, anyway. Well, it's good to hear you taking care of yourself today. You're in your comfy yeah. pajamas, and you're drinking your comforting tea. Right, and we this lovely conversation. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I have a quickly throw, so forgive me for that. Um, so... Uh, okay, so now you're, you're realizing that, you know, this stressful period is really exacerbating um, Yeah, it definitely, can you hear me okay? Because you're swirling. Hello. <laughs> can you hear and see me okay? Now I can. <laughs> okay. I don't know what's going on, but um, I did, I think I heard what you said. Was it, um, you know, I was, I, I was a dancer and my lipedema started to progress and if I look backward on, on my life, I could see that there were times where I was showing signs of lipedema, early stage one or stage two, but it wasn't, you know, and it was frustrating because I wasn't able to lose weight or control my weight like other dancers and other people that I saw. And sometimes when I tried really hard, it would be worse. And when I look mm -hmm. at pictures, I can see evidence of lipedema. But right, it no, didn't, no. but it wasn't, you know, I still was able to, in my late 30s and early 40s, I was in graduate school as a dancer, I was dancing every day. And, you know, I was still able to be a dance professor. So it didn't like stop me from dancing or doing what I wanted to do until I progressed. 
to mm -hmm. this other place. And I like rapidly gained a lot of weight and lost my coordination, my balance. Mm -hmm. I was in, you know, a tremendous amount of pain, all fed by the emotional mm -hmm. like stress that I was under in my life. And that's when I, um, that's when I started doing, you know, working with another somatic healer. And then I completed the training and, and went into practice for healing myself. Nice. Yeah. So how, um, so did you find that to be helpful in the, uh, you know, in the beginning, uh, find a release when you were in pain? Um, I won't say that it um, impacted me physically right away. In fact, when I went to training weekends and I was processing a lot of emotional stuff and I had a lot to, yeah. you know, kind of process and unpack that sometimes my pain would be worse because we work with energy in this, you know, we're freeing up energetic blocks in the body. So when that energy is released and comes through, it can be exhausting. We were kind of just right. talking about that before this call, you know, doing some of these physical treatments actually make you feel kind of crappy. So I went through mm -hmm. a long period of that, but, um, you know, gradually just getting better mm -hmm. emotionally, feeling better emotionally, ha making better relationships, setting better boundaries in my life. Um, Okay, so that part, do you think that, so I didn't hear anything you said, because it was all paused. Do you think um, it would be helpful to move to a different section of your space? Let there? me, um, is there another, let me check and let me. I think, does this mean she has to request back in? I don't know. We'll see. can't say that I've encountered this yet. <laughs> okay, so I, I changed networks. So maybe, can you hear me now? Maybe not. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I got my fingers crossed. Let's see how this goes, because um, I changed, I changed Wi-Fi networks. Um, okay, great. On my phone, so. <sighs> um, we thought, oh no, she has to, she's going to have to request back in. Wait, how's this going to work? But, okay, Sorry. Good. Um, so, um, All right. You're, you're I'm not here it. by the router. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you, so you're, you're doing the somatic practice and that's why it's called practice, right? Because you really have to learn how to get in and release and, and yes. connect even. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then With this particular uh, training so that I did, you're at high, um, mm -hmm. yes, I don't know. Yeah. You were okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's showing you when you go disconnected. Does it show you that? I, what I see is I see you start to spin and I see you cutting out. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Cause I'm only seeing you spin. Uh, huh. You think I should move? I don't know. I don't know who it is. I mean, this is just where I always sit. So, um,
literally. Hold on. Power. I don't know. Looks like it's working. Okay. Not sure. All right. I'm going to sit here right next to the router now. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So now you're in, you're like at the height of your lipedema and you decide. Yeah. And you're, um, yeah. your stress is, well, your stress is different. Right. You know, at that point you had different yes. stressors, right? Um, <laughs> right. Well, so I was, then, yeah, I, I, I mean, I left my husband, I left my husband and I went through a really, really difficult, long and difficult divorce. So that yeah. was part of it. But as I was going through that, I was doing the somatic training and part of the training, we have to, you know, we, you, we can't just train, you have to do this work yourself, like you were saying. And right. so sure. sometimes doing that work and dredging up all the feelings makes your physical pain actually worse. Um, Probably. Right? <laughs> right. Because we're, we're moving energy, and as you move these energy blocks, it can be a lot. Right. And so I think what I learned during that time was to take better care of myself and how to accept myself more in whatever condition I was in. And I learned how to reach out for help. And, um, you know, I, and, and that's at a certain point, I made the decision to have surgery during my training. And I started that process about a year ago. Do we think there's any point in getting ending and coming back? We can we try. try. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to be working okay. well. Okay. Let, let's try. Let's try. I'm going to end and come back.